Hey everybody, welcome to Country Girl. Today I'm going to show you how I make my coleslaw and chili for hot dogs. And right here, I'm just cutting a couple of slices off of a small head of cabbage. You don't really need a whole lot because um, this will make quite a bit. I guess if you were making it for like a large gathering, you could use a whole head. But I'm just gonna take this and put it into my food processor and pulse it a couple times to get it to a nice fine consistency. If I was gonna eat my coleslaw as a side, I probably would just rough chop it with a knife. But since I am gonna be putting it on my hot dog, I do like to have it a lot finer. This recipe is super easy. Um, you're basically just putting everything into a bowl and mixing it together. And if I was gonna make this for a side, I probably would do something maybe a little bit different with my recipe. But for hot dogs, you just need just a few simple ingredients. So I always put my salt and pepper in first. And since I've got this Himalayan sea salt that I purchased at the Dollar Tree, I am using that. Um, I'm shaking the pepper in there and I'm just eyeballing it, but I will put a recipe down below if you do want to get exact measurements for that. After that, I'm just going to stir it up, get it good and worked in. Next, I'm just going to add a sprinkle of sugar over top. And this, it just really depends on how um, sweet tasting you want your coleslaw. Some people like more sugar than others. Now that I have added all of the dry ingredients to my mix, I am going to add my wet ingredients. And I'm gonna start off with just a splash of vinegar. You do wanna be careful when you are putting this in because if you add too much, it can make your coleslaw too tangy. The next ingredient is what actually makes this coleslaw and that is adding your mayonnaise. Now, if anybody has watched my cooking videos before, y'all know that um, we are JFG mayonnaise fans. I'm not really sure if JFG is sold um, everywhere in the country or just where I live, but um, you know, you might want to give it a try sometime. I know people are real funny about their mayonnaise, but um, we love it. And matter of fact, when I make things without that particular mayonnaise, Madeline can tell the difference. That's just how different it is. But anyway, so this is the consistency of what your coleslaw should look like. You don't want to get it too um, juicy because then it'll just make a soggy hot dog. But I'm just going to put this away into the refrigerator until I get done um, fixing my chili and everything. And then I'll pull it back out when we're ready to fix up our hot dogs. Now the chili is just as easy to make as the coleslaw. I'm basically just browning a uh, pound of ground beef and I'm just chopping it up you know, as it cooks and um, adding some salt and pepper to that. I'm going to um, put the recipe for this chili down below. But in addition to that, I am gonna also put another recipe that uh, my sister gave me. I think I actually like hers better. So I'm gonna give you both options that way y'all can decide which ones um, you or which one you prefer to use. I just felt like that hers was just a little bit more savory than the one I made for this particular evening. But I'm just adding the onions to the hamburger meat as I'm chopping it up and cooking it till it gets nice and soft. And then I'm going to drain it. Now this is just how I drain my hamburger meat. I just take a good washed out can and I put this into a strainer and let the grease drip down into it. And then I'm going to wash out my frying pan and return it back to the burner and then add the meat and onions back to that as well. And what I did, I actually skipped a step. Um, I thought I had recorded it, but I must not have had it on record. But when I did return the meat and onions back to my frying pan, I added some chopped up garlic. And I think it was about two or three clove, cloves of garlic that I put into that. And you just want to cook it for a couple more minutes so that it, um, you know, starts to soften a little bit. And um, now the next part to this, you can do several different ways. If you don't mind having your chili a little bit chunky, you can leave it just like it is. I personally prefer to have my hot dog chili very fine. So I am going to transfer mine back to my food processor and run it through a few times. Now, I, um, 
My sister, when I was talking to her the other day, she told me that she actually uses her emulsion blender. And that's what uh, people use sometimes when they're cooking creamy soups. They put this little hand blender down into their pot and blend it up. And she said hers works absolutely perfect for her hamburger meat. And so I thought, well, you know, that would probably be better than me using my food processor because, you know, I don't have to transfer everything and then mess up a whole uh, another you know, piece of kitchen equipment. So I think I am going to try that little trick next time. So if y'all do have one of those, um, you know, you might want to do it. But after I get everything chopped up, I do return that to the pot. And that is when I start to add my seasonings. And I will just list those um, on the screen as I'm putting them in. Because going back and doing this voiceover, I really cannot remember exactly what and how much I had. I don't have my recipe in front of me right now. But, you know, um, basically it's just getting your hamburger meat brown, getting it chopped up, and then just adding everything to it and keeping it warm or on the burner on low until you're... Um, weenies get done and that's about it so um anyway i hope you enjoyed watching this video and i hope that um whichever chili recipe you decide to make that it turns out super great and that you enjoy it